What's going on reef builders? I am Jake Adams and I'm so excited about so many different things because next weekend we have reef stock here in Denver and uh, I've been building out the studio with my buddy Evan and a lot of help from the community for six months and uh, man everything's just really really growing great. I'm very excited to uh, finally get to a point where we're just aquascaping here and taking care of corals and feeding fish and stuff like that. But one of the ways that we uh, really laid down at a very important foundation here at the studio is by uh, taking care of the filtration and some of the chemistry uh, aspects of reef aquariums before setting up the tank. And uh, so this video is gonna be all about uh, pH how to keep it high, and especially what we did here to kind of create a uh, basically an ecosystem of calquaster delivery. Um, don't know what to call it, but it's really, really important. So you've probably heard of uh, ocean acidification and how it's slowing down the calcification of everything in the ocean, um, especially corals. And you see this in the news all the time. So it doesn't really take too much logic to flip that uh, scenario on its head and what happens in a high pH environment. And uh, what happens in a high pH environment, your corals are happier and they grow a lot faster. So, so many different reefers are uh, chasing rainbows and looking for snake oils and magical silver bullets that are gonna make their corals grow faster. But honestly, just raise your freaking pH. So, in the past, you know, it was kind of considered okay to have your pH fluctuate between 7.8 to 8.2 and 8 to 8.2 is the considered kind of high. But here at the studio, that is not good enough. Here at the studio, we really aim for like 8.2 to 8.4. And, you know, we do a little cartwheel when the pH reaches 8.5 at the end of the day. So there's three different things um, to help us monitor, manage, and control the pH here in our aquariums. The first thing you need is a good pH probe of any kind. Um, you know, a, a dedicated pH machine is gonna be much better than one that's just tacked on to some other electronic system. So right now, I am so in love with this HANA Bluetooth pH probe. The reason I love it is because I can just take, have one of these and I can go from tank to tank to tank. So the way you get it going, you just kind of press the button, it starts flashing blue, and I've paired it uh, with my phone before and every single time is so fast that we're not even gonna jump cut of it. So here, no probe connected, go to Bluetooth, it's already on, done, it's already going, it's already connected. But right now it's inside of its uh, storage medium. So we're gonna go around the, uh, the studio and check the pH on a couple different things. So here we go, so definitely wanna thank Hannah for hooking this up, what should we test first? Let's test this one because this is probably going to be a little bit lower than I've been doing uh, lately because just added the calcium reactor. If you saw that video, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's adding some CO2 laden water to the system. Um, we've got about 200 gallons here and um, normally actually I've been testing these so often that I actually know what the pH has been turning out to but this one's probably going to be a little bit lower since we started uh, the calcium reactor up yesterday. So what are we at now? So yeah, 8.13. By any measure, that would be okay by reefers. I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with that. Um, so we're gonna work on that. But let me show you over here, if you didn't see in the video, here's the Calquaster reactor, and here's the CO2 line, or not the CO2 line, the calcium reactor that has uh, CO2 laden water. So these basically are kind of balancing each, each other out. But let's go to a different system where I can show you an example of what we consider much higher pH. So this, this is the main system. This is the main event where the coals are. And I'm not even looking. And uh, let's see, it's about four o'clock. I'd say we're right at 8.4. 8.4, give or take. 8.39, how's that? I had no idea, I promise I did not test that earlier. So right now it's 8.39, in a couple hours, it would probably scratch up to like 8.45, 8.5, and this is one of those things that really helps the coral growth. Let's go test the, the Red Sea tank, just for fun. We're, so we're just uh, getting the alkalinity back up after having our buffer run out um, without us knowing. And um, so I know it's been running a little bit lower because it was mirroring the, uh, the coral flat at like 8.2 to 8.45. So I'm gonna guess this one's gonna be closer to 8.3. Ooh, it's a little bit lower than I thought. 
8.16. It's still a little bit early, so it could go higher. So, um, so, so pH is one of the most important things. That 8.4 pH is what we really want to aim for. That's kind of like the peak. Um, I guess I should back up a little bit. Uh, your pH is actually fluctuates because at night there's no photosynthesis going on to absorb the carbon dioxide, and in the day everything is uh, photosynthesizing, so there's less CO2 in the water. So that's why um, when your lights come on is going to be your lowest pH of the day, and then kind of at the end of the bright cycle is when your pH is going to be highest. So um, the most important thing you can do after you know what your pH is for sure, and you know what it is, is dose Kalkwasser. We figured this out 30 years ago, and people are still playing games trying to use a ketomorpha reactor to soak up CO2, put the line outside to have less CO2 in the air that goes in your protein skimmer, and all kinds of things. But honestly, adding Kalkwasser to your tank is the best thing you can do, both to add calcium, but really, really, really just to raise the pH. So how do we do this? So Kalkwasser is uh, calcium hydroxide. It's just this very fine powder. Um, interestingly enough, it's made from corals in some places just by burning it real hot. Um, and we use the Brightwell Aquatics Calc Plus 2 because it also has magnesium and strontium two trace elements that we always need more of in your tank. And so classically, what you would do is make up a batch of this and just kind of have it drip into your tank. But we, ain't nobody got time for that here at the studio. So what we have is these Avast Marine uh, do-it-yourself calc reactor kits. So this is a smaller one. I think it's good for like up to seven liters per day. And we have some larger ones we use on the systems that are good for up to, I think like 14 liters per day. But um, how does it work? Okay, so water basically comes in here, comes down this line and inside here is where the calcium hydroxide is, or the calc, and the motor up here um, just constantly stirs this bottom part. So it's constantly slowly stirring the calc wasser with fresh water. It's very important to mention that. You only mix, mix calc wasser with fresh water. And as it uh, fills up, which it stays full, it just kind of drains. <laughs> it just drains out here into the tank, and you can put any nipple you want. So this is how we make kind of automatic uh, lime water. So lime water, calcium hydroxide, uh, calc, it's all the same thing. It's just a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. So here's a dry one, and I want to show you probably the best one running. Uh, probably the best one to show is going to be this one right here. So this is, you know, this is how it looks like when it's running. And um, you see it's got a lot of just powderiness in there. But basically it just drips almost constantly into the system here, um, that fresh water. So that's actually part of our top off as well. So most of the top off water is replaced through uh, the addition of Kalkwasser. That's not bad for one take, but we're not quite done for the basically the delivery system here at the Reef Builder Studio because a very, very important component. I'll have you get down in there. So this is kind of like, dare I say, the genius that we kind of came up with here at the studio. So instead of having one doser with one water reservoir feeding one calc reactor for every little system that we have here, um, we have a massive freshwater reservoir. So these are pickle barrels. This one's 55 gallons and it's tied in with one behind the cameraman for 110 gallons. Um, these feed uh, gravity feed some float switches here on some of the tanks. But most importantly, I've got the GHF doser 2.1 it's a Wi-Fi controllable programmable uh, dosing system that delivers fresh water to four different uh, uh, systems here at the studio. And this is so awesome. I can't tell you how awesome that is because it's one less component that's driving so many things here at the studio. So we've got two lines here that are going to show tanks, the peninsula, the, the water box peninsula and the Red Sea Peninsula. And then the other two clear lines here are feeding uh, two of these coral systems that we have here. So. What else is there to say? Uh, keep your pH high. Calcwasser is the best way to do it. Um, what I love about this is I'm able to use one app to control four different channels. So for example, on this particular system right here, I'm dosing 
<laughs> on this system right here, let's see, I'm trying to remember. We're dosing seven and a half liters of pH 11 Kalkwasser to the tank every single day. So this is seven and a half liters. That system right there is 10 liters. And I did get this pH up to like 8.7 at one point um, until I added the cal cal calcium reactor, which is putting in the CO2 into the tank. And our, so far, our main showcase reef aquarium here, the Red Sea Peninsula is getting five liters of Kalkwasser per day. And it's fresh water. And so that's, uh, you know, doing a lot of the top off. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, pH is critical. When you have that pH high, the corals grow faster. I think that was not bad for, for one single take. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say about it. I think we covered it all. Uh, make sure you test that pH correctly. Um, make sure you calibrate your pH probe and you have a probe that you trust. I love my Hannah Bluetooth just because I can go pop, 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 pop. And there's some lo logging features on the phone, which I haven't dived into. Um, a calc stirrer is a really, really good idea. So you're not mixing it up all the time. And then you want a good programmable uh, dosing pump or even one dosing pump channel to deliver fresh water to your calc reactor. Um, the Evas Marine is one of the cheapest. I mean, it's one of the simplest things you can have for a reef aquarium. Um, I think the kit is like uh, 159, I want to say, with everything you need. And it takes 30 minutes to assemble it yourself. And it's actually kind of fun. Helps you understand how it works. Um, yeah, so cool. I think that's about it. That's what I wanted to say on pH. Um, thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. If uh, you're in the Denver general area next weekend, the first weekend of March, and make sure to come see us at uh, Reefstock, and that's going to be March 2nd and 3rd. For all information, go to the website, uh, reefstock.show, and then for up-to-the-minute details on our prizes and any logistics, uh, check out the Facebook event page and make sure RSVP. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I know you're going to have some questions about pH because it's if, if I hadn't heard this before and someone told me, oh, this is the, the magic to growing corals faster, I would also be skeptical. But honestly, high pH is where it's at. So if you have any questions about calc dosing, high pH, growing corals faster, uh, go ahead and leave a comment and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.